Hello viewers, this is Asian Rush, and your invitation to Gotcha Board World has arrived. The Gotcha Force was a GameCube game released in 2003 by Capcom, and it's an arena shooter based around toy robots. I think it's a lot of fun, and I hope you have a good time watching, because I'm going to have a good time showing it to you. We launch right into the opening. And while there's no theme song explaining the story, I think it does a good job of showing the various characters and getting you pumped to play the game. It's got pretty good music too, so I'll probably just let you enjoy that. Why do they make it seem like Cole's the alone who had to go somewhere to meet his partner? We get a shot of the death force. And everybody gets to show off their skills a bit. Also get a shot of the villain at their most imposing. All in all, a good intro. After this, G Rat will come in and give us a little bit of exposition. Yeah, they use the word Borg a lot in this game. After a bit of dialogue, we'll go into the first battle. And while Gotcha Force does ease you into the game with simple battles against weak forces, there's no real tutorial to speak of. Fortunately, the basic mechanics aren't too hard to get a handle on. Uh, for now, I'll just let G-Red explain who those are. Controls are pretty standard. Move with the control stick, jump with the A button. You notice your B and X attacks on the lower right, your health in the lower left, and in the upper left, the GF energy meters. Those only go down when a Borg is defeated, so it's really just a measure of how close each side is to defeat. And that little meter that keeps appearing at the bottom is G Red's boost meter. Any Borg that uses that can jump gets those, and because G-Red uses jump jets, he gets that. And after victory, it gives us a score, though the grand total is only impacted by the number of Borgs you defeated, the number of Borgs you've lost, and whether or not you got the first attack. Everything else is just decoration. They let you name your character, and Ko's as good a name as any. <laughs> and with that declaration, Chapter 1 begins in earnest. And we meet our, f we save, of course. And then we meet our first ally commander, Kakeru. Now, Kakeru specializes in ninja borgs, and his partner Sasuke is a modified normal ninja. Aside from Jiraiya, the partner borgs are all modified versions of existing borgs. Ninjas are 
generally fast attackers. They're best at close to medium range. As you can see, I kind of bully him with beams here. Uh, if you take note of the reticle, notice when it's yellow, an enemy is invincible all the time. And when it's red, you can hit him. When it's solid, that's in range for most projectiles. And when there are spikes around it, that's when you're in range for melee attacks. Melee attacks are generally context sensitive to the B button, though there are a few command attacks with X, depends on the board. And that was nice of them. <laughs> oh, and they give us two battles. I guess we'll go meet Mana first. This is one of the few battles in where you have more than one ally. Uh, Mana's partner now is a nurse board. Specifically, an angel, a modified angel nurse. Angel nurses aren't too great at fighting, but they're the only boards that can heal their allies. So they're good if you prefer to support someone. Though if you're by yourself and have to rely on an angel nurse, you've probably lost. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you see that these death works can't really do anything to us. I promise, not everything is this simple. And if you notice those blue triangles, that indicate what your ally is targeting. Another win. And as you may have seen, each win increases your GF energy by 10. That becomes important later. Some plot related battles raise it further, but that's generally a chapter ending fight. Oh, and we meet Kitsune and his partner Isaac. Isaac's a modified claw robot. And claw robots generally do best at close range, though they do have missiles for longer range. Although missiles can be shot down. And if you notice when the reticle went dashed for a moment, that generally indicates a Borg is out of range. While most projectiles can still hit a Borg that far out, unless they've somehow been immobilized, you probably won't. Generally, these and these three ranges, as I've mentioned, vary from Borg to Borg. Oh. You'll see, again, controlling the range, and you control the match. No, no, it wasn't. That's kind of an odd reaction. And we'll just save again here. And the first battle in which we can choose our ally. I think we'll go with Kakeri for now. Generally, these Defeat the Deathworth missions are just generic fights against a random selection of Borgs, though this early one is a bunch of death works again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, for the last little um, UI element, sorry, that gear on the um, to the right of the GF meter is the power burst meter. It fills up as you deal damage to the enemy, and when it's full you can initiate power burst, also known as hyper mode. Oh, that's what I get for not paying attention. I'll go into more detail about that later. <laughs> and another win. Oh. Now if you notice that red triangle, as opposed to the yellow triangles, is when the game deems a difficult battle. It's generally a good idea to save before them, it usually means you're going to fight harder Borgs. And we'll quickly meet a new character here. I think we'll let Mana show her stuff here. Oh, this is a two-on-two -two fight.
Now the new Borg up there is Vlad, Nakove's partner. He's a modified vampire knight. Like a knight Borg who specializes in close range attacks. Though vampire knights in particular have a special ability in that they can drain HP from any Borg they hit with their swords. Does mean you need to be a little more cautious when in melee range with them. And that spin attack can cover a lot of ground quickly. So really just keep your wits about you and he's not too challenging. Really, game? That's what you call a difficult battle? Oh, come on, guys. We didn't beat you that bad. Yes, we did. Was that so? Oh, hey, look. That's a rather large increase of GF energy. And now we can create a force, though we'll do that next time. I'll explain it in detail later then. Good night, and thanks for watching.